knock the f out of that guy. You know what I mean? We should just wear him out with this play. Okay. The Iceman and Big Willie take their place in the Bengals' Ring of Honor Thursday night the only way they can, as game changers and influencers. With his frosty grace, Isaac Curtis freezes his legacy as the prototype of the modern wide receiver. A transplanted running back with world-class speed and unworldly hands, Curtis made them change the rules in a career of four Pro Bowls and countless highlights during a dozen seasons in the 70s and 80s. Wearing the biggest cleat in Bengals history, a size 18, Willie Anderson steps into the ring with one of the biggest footprints in franchise history as the greatest right tackle in the turn of the century NFL. Another four-time Pro Bowler during 12 years in Cincinnati, Anderson also helped change the game by making sure foes didn't turn a blind eye opposite the blind side. The new Bengals, the new team, baby, a new era. Let's start right now. Their Ring of Honor class spans the Who Day generations. Cincinnati put a man in the slot on the right side. That will be Isaac Curtis, their top receiver. Isaac Curtis at the one yard line. It's caught by Isaac Curtis. Touchdown! Curtis averaged an NFL best 21.2 yards per catch on head coach Paul Brown's last team in 1975. Two of his last three 100 yard games came in pivotal wins on the way to their first Super Bowl in 1981. Look at Isaac Curtis, just a little delay there, right in front of Ronnie Lott. Oh, the Iceman, he's got to be in. There have been some 85s in the past, but there's only one 85 in my mind, and that was Isaac Curtis. Curtis became an immediate favorite of Paul Brown in that rookie season of 1973. He stunned the league right out of San Diego State on more than 18 yards per catch and nine touchdowns five of them in the final few games of the season that fueled division wins and gave the Bengals the AFC Central title. I'll tell you what, I initially I did not have any idea who was going to draft me. I got a call that day from Bill Walsh, who was the offensive coordinator then, and uh, he said the Cincinnati Bengals will just draft you in the first round. He asked me, well, when can you come to Cincinnati? I said, well, as soon as you can send me a ticket, because I can't afford to buy one. He came out as a receiver. The thing about him that everyone knew that was eye-catching was his speed. He had a stride that you didn't see very often. No one would catch Isaac once he got underway. After Curtis scorched the Cleveland namesakes for three touchdowns, he knew he had it made when Brown shook his hand and offered that was really something special. He was the only player I knew that he came out one afternoon to practice and he said, I don't know, but I think my hamstring is tight. Paul said, take the afternoon off. We don't want it. We don't, we don't want anything to happen to you. So we knew he was special right away. Curtis would go on to torture the Browns for the rest of his career, scoring 12 of his 53 touchdowns against Cleveland and he showed no mercy to the rest of a division known for rugged defenses, averaging 17 and a half yards per catch in AFC Central games. He was an immediate success, and nobody could stay with him. He was just too fast. He had the whole package. I would tell you he would start on any Bengals team we ever had. It's caught by Isaac Curtis, and he spun away from a tackle. Curtis's unique brand helped change the rule book and spawn the modern passing game. Paul Brown, an influential member of the NFL Competition Committee, lobbied to restrict defenses and free up eligible receivers like his gifted game breaker. Some have referred to it as the Isaac Curtis rule. Yeah, you know, when I did come in the league, if, uh, if teams have kind of figured out that, uh, well, if we can't contain you with zone or we can't run with you with man, then we just, we just try to take you out. I think it all kind of started off in, in 73. And that time you could mug a receiver all over the field. And of course, Isaac never complained about anything. He was just an unselfish player. You know, it's not, can he get me the ball? Can he get me the, you know, come, I'm, I'm open, will you throw me the ball? You know, no, he was all about the team, you know, and all about winning. Isaac played during a time when the rules allowed the covering back to literally jam him or even roadblock him all over the field. It curtailed the passing game in the National Football League. Football was just kind of coming into the television age, and I think Paul Brown realized that it, it, people want excitement, and it's tough to throw the ball when you do that. So therefore, it came to the five-yard rule that uh, you could only you know hit a receiver in the first five, then you had to let him go. And of course, that opened the passing game up a lot, and henceforth, the Isaac Curtis rule. He's at the 10, he's at the five, touchdown! It's opened up the game, it's made it a much better game and a much more exciting game. These guys now are catching 100 passes. You know, we caught 45 passes, that was a lot of 
lot of passes back then. Yet Curtis wreaked havoc on the game as the quintessential Paul Brown player. Quiet, but smart, not to mention tenacious and tough. His signature, act like you've been there before, touchdown celebration of a simple over-the-shoulder flip of the ball summed up his classy career. You know, there was no end zone celebration with Isaac. I mean, he just crossed the goal line and goes over my head. You know, no big deal. But that was just, that was Isaac. He was the Iceman. Willie Anderson displayed the same qualities during a Bengals tenure that stretched across two centuries and two stadiums with nine starting quarterbacks and four head coaches. Oh my God, I met him at the Combine. He was uh, 20 years old. We sit down and we're talking and he thinks I'm the equipment man or whatever. He didn't realize I was a coach. And, and here he was, uh, one of the youngest players to ever come out of the draft. My brother been telling everybody throughout the process that that's the guy we want, that's the guy we want. So I was hoping that I would be a top 10 pick. I knew the Bengals had the 10th pick and I didn't want to be a junior and fall below the 10th pick. To me, that, that would have been a fail. I could have came back the next year and been hired. I did a drill with him where I had him just put his arms out and I grabbed his arms and tried to push him down as hard as I could. And I could have done pull-ups on his arms. He was that strong. He was a natural. He played for us for 12 years, and he went to the Pro Bowl four times. He was just a uh, top performer for us for a long time. Willie was good from the beginning. You know, there's been a lot of good offensive tackles your rookie year give up five or six sacks, you know what I mean? Willie never did that. While Anderson blocked for Corey Dillon's NFL rookie record 246 yards late in the old century in 1997, he helped pave Dillon's way to the NFL record of 278 yards in the first year of the new one, in 2000. He then helped bring the club's first AFC North title to Cincinnati in 2005, while aiding quarterback Carson Palmer, wide receiver Chad Johnson, and running back Rudy Johnson in setting team season records for passing efficiency, receiving yards, and rushing yards. They can't stop it in the middle, man. They tell we keep running power in the middle, they can't stop it down there. Willie was certainly the best run-blocking tackle in football. So he could just mash them and maul them and knock them off the ball with explosiveness and athleticism. Oh, and Willie just knocked the f out of that guy. You know what I mean? We should just wear him over this point. Our number one play was called 16 Chase. The other name was 16 Will. And they were both, hey, Corey, just go follow Willie. We gotta do it, man. It ain't over yet. This is a new team, man. There's a lot of football left. What we gonna give up in our personal lives, man? What are we gonna do to get better, to get to the point we gotta get to, man? Cause we gotta get there. I wanna get there. Everybody wanna get there. Through the transitions, his huge presence on the right side was just as big in a locker room where he presided as a franchise statesman. Only Pro Football Hall of Famer Anthony Munoz played more games on the Bengals offensive line. Let's take this win home. All it counts to win. One, two, three, win. I mean, I, I came here at 20 years old. When they drafted me, I was 20. I turned 21 during the, that summer. I remember reading my rookie card, and it said the Bengals are hoping that he's a star worker for 10 plus years. I ended up playing 12 years here, my 13 years, so I'm happy to, to, to live up to my rookie card standards. Studious and savage, Anderson combined a massive body with ballet feet and a savant's instincts to confound the greatest defensive ends. I saw the PFF stat in the last 20 years, he's got the highest graded pass blocking grade of any tackle to play the game. He could diagnose how to block people like no one I've ever seen before. He could watch a certain number of plays, he could tell by a guy's stance, he could tell by the way he initially moves exactly what that guy could do and how he could block him. Which is why he gave up 16 sacks in 13 years. No! No, baby! He was famous for blocking the guys no one could block. It's kind of funny, they say, oh, you know, I don't know if he's a Hall of Fame player because he played right tackle instead of left tackle. Well, guess what? Half the rushers in the Pro Football Hall of Fame played left end against right tackles. But you don't hear them say, oh, Strahan shouldn't go in the Hall of Fame because he played left end. Or Reggie White shouldn't go in the Hall of Fame because he played left end. While left tackles consumed the headlines for protecting the quarterback's blind side, Anderson quietly proved his work on the ignored right side was just as viable and elite. He played 15 games against Pro Football Hall of Fame pass rushers and allowed one sack. I played against Reggie White, and he was one of my first childhood idols. I knew then, like, oh, if he can't beat me, like, there's no one in this league gonna beat me. And I kind of went on that kind of run, 
9901, no sacks, one pressure. Three great years that no one didn't notice at the time. They, 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 not, they know now. From 2004 to 2006, Anderson became the only right tackle in the last 40 years to be named All-Pro three straight seasons. But Anderson's legacy is just as immense in the run game. His offensive lines produced the top five rushing seasons in Bengals history. A year or two ago, he and Anthony Munoz were on the field together helping to show our young offensive linemen how to set, how to pass block, how to move. We had these new young players and they were trying hard, but Willie and Anthony, you would have picked them. <laughs> there was no problem about that. Nearly 15 years after his retirement, Anderson continues to influence the game as a valued philosopher and teacher of offensive line play for all ages. Last year, when he became a Pro Football Hall of Fame finalist for the first time, his Willie Anderson Offensive Line Academy secured college scholarships for 15 high school players. Now, he enters the Bengals' ring of honor.